All right, so today we're going to be continuing on with our look into organic chemistry. Last time we learned how to name simple uh, alkane molecules, so pretty much just basic molecules with a single bond. So for instance, we learned that indicated that there were one, two, three carbons in the molecule there. So really this could look like this with some carbons coming off of it, or sorry, not carbons, some hydrogens coming off of it. And these two things were the same thing. A chain of three carbons all singly bonded together. That's an alkane. And these two things, this top little triangle looking thing there, and this covalent molecule we drew out, same thing. And they both mean the same thing. They're a carbon chain with three carbons, and we know that the, the prefix for three is prop. And since everything is single bonded together, we just add A and E at the end. So now let me get rid of that. So let's say we're not working with just a simple chain. Let's say you're given that molecule right there. Oh, and we need to name that. Let's put that back there. To name this thing, the first thing we'll gonna, we have to do is we need to figure out what is the longest chain of carbons. So looking at it right now, I could go one, two, three, four. That's not it. One, two, three, four, five. That's not it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's not a bad number, but let's just double check, make sure that that's the longest one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we know that we're going to be working with a chain that is eight carbons long. But then we've got these, so let's just even number these things. So we got two ways we can number it. We can either start with this carbon here or this carbon here. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. We still need to worry about these two little legs sticking out here. Okay. These two arms need to be part of the name because right now eight carbon chain we would know that is octane. But for this molecule, that doesn't tell us everything we need to know. We need to indicate where these two arms are. So looking at this, to indicate where those arms are, we first need to figure out how many carbons those arms represent. Well, both of these arms only represent one carbon being attached to them. And we should know from before that if it's one carbon, we're working with methane. Okay, so both of these would be represented by, by you know, if they were just one carbon, they'd be methane. So we have two methanes attached to our octane. So in the name, the way we're going to do that is, first off, we need to get our numbering such that we're using the smallest numbers possible. With it numbered the way I have it here, it goes where the two numbers that we would need to indicate would be five and six. That's not bad. But let's say we number it the other way. So I'm just going to put it above here. So let's say this carbon right here is number one. This carbon here is two. And we go three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So now with it numbered that way, we're going to be worried about carbon number three and carbon number four. Those are smaller than five and six. So let's just go ahead. We're going to use the, those top numbers there. So let me scratch off those bottom ones. All right. So I know that I have something on carbon number three and something on carbon number four. Remember, you need to use the smallest numbers possible. So if you need to reverse your numbering, feel free to do so. All right. So now we need to indicate this little arm right here. So to do so, we know that it's on carbon three. So I'm just going to write three. Then I'm going to put a dash. And we know that there's a methane attached to carbon number three. This here, that's just a CH3 right there, attached to carbon number three. Now, 
if it was just CH3, we would call it methane. But now, since it's a methane attached to a bigger carbon chain, we're going to change that methane. We're going we're gonna to keep the meth part of it. But in this case, we're going to end it with YL. That's 3-methyl. Well, in this case, it's not just 3-methyl. Because we also have a methyl group here. So th this here isn't a methane attached to an octane. We would say that this is a methyl group. Because this is our first kind of starting to functional groups. This is a methyl group attached to an octane. Okay? So we have a methyl group on 3. And let's even... We're going to change the molecule up a little bit there. We're going to another carbon there. So here on, on number 4... We have two carbons attached to it. So on carbon number four, we have two carbons attached to it. Before we knew that the, the prefix for two was F. So this isn't for ethane, it's for, it's for ethyl, okay? So I now have everything I need. I know that my base chain is eight, so octane. My base chain is eight carbons long, so octane. I have a methyl group on carbon number three and an ethyl group on number four. So now to name this properly, um, just without any kind of back knowledge, I could either go by the number of the carbons or by the first letter of the functional group here. What we're going to do is we're going to have to go first letter of the functional group. So in this case, E comes before M. So when I first name it, I need to start with this part here, then I'm going to put that part, and ending off with the parent chain. So to name this thing, I have 4-ethyl. I put a comma. Sometimes you're going to see a dash. Either way is going to be fine. So 4-ethyl, 3-methyl, 3 Okay, that takes care of my two functional groups here. Now I just need to name the parent chain. Sometimes, once again, you're going to see a dash here. If you're doing it comma method, you're not going to see a comma here. Then we just end it with octane. Now the A and E here becomes important. Uh, last time we learned that that A and E meant everything was singly bonded together. That A right here means we're done with this molecule. So name this molecule right here. First thing I had to do, figure out What's the longest chain? That's some bad handwriting. All right. Second thing, um, number it. Number the carbons on the chain. Third step, identify functional groups. I'm just going to call those FGs, functional groups. Uh, and then the fourth part is put functional groups in alphabetical order. Okay. And then the fifth thing, end with parent chain or the longest chain. All right. It's kind of messy. Just kind of force our way through there, um, taking a molecule, figuring out its name, the name by the way, here, I'm just going to put a box around it just so it doesn't get lost in all of the goop going on, 4-ethyl-3-methyl-octane, because you're looking at the, the first letter of the functional groups. So the numbers don't matter too much here, but the eth and the meth do. All right. So that is how we kind of look at a molecule, get it named, which is, I would say, the hardest part of it. Let's say we're going to look at a name, 2-methyl-3-propyl-octane. If you have the name, drawing it is a lot easier. For instance, we're just going to start parent chain. We know that the parent chain is going to end with A and E, octane. So I just need to draw a chain with eight carbons. So put my point down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. All right, the octane part's done. Now I'm just going to go through and figure out where I can number them right away, or I can wait. Um, but let's just start off. I'm just going to start at the beginning here with my functional groups. 2-methyl. All right, so now 
It doesn't matter which direction I start with, so long as I always start from the same end. Um, if you like going in the direction like you read a book, you could start here, start at the left, work your way right, um, or you can go the reverse direction, either one's fine. So let's just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This way it also gives me a chance to check to make sure I numbered right. All right, two methyl. I'm gonna find carbon number two, methyl group. So I just need to indicate that there's one carbon coming off of this, or uh, not one, yeah, one carbon coming off of this carbon here. So I'm just gonna go, whoop, that's my carbon. That is my two methyl group. Carbon number two, that's my one carbon. Three propyl, all right, carbon number three. I need to have three carbons coming off of it. So in this case, I'm just gonna go one, two, three. One, two, three, that's my propyl. So I could even circle them and even say, that's my methyl. This right here is my propyl group here. According to the name, there's no other functional groups on it. So I'm done drawing this one. If you have the name, drawing it way easy. Essentially, we're still just using the, those base prefix roots we had last time. And we're just adding to it. We're just adding to our parent chains. And the prefixes are still the key. Propyl. Prop means three. Three carbons here. Meth means one. One carbon here. Just have to add it to our parent chain, which we know ends with any. All right. So that is branching alkanes. Next time we're going to look at alkenes and alkynes.